So you should all be very well acquainted with this mineral in front of us right now. That's olivine. And look, it's one of those beautiful mantle xenoliths from um, San Carlos. So this is a typical sample of San Carlos olivine. Honestly, all of the samples that we have, um, or at least that I have to show you, are either from San Carlos or I think from one other location in Oh gosh, I can't even remember where. But in San Carlos, um, olivines, we expect to have, you know, this kind of polycrystalline aggregate, right? We were ripping up chunks of the mantle. This one here is really nice because you can see the differences in grain size. So we have these smaller grains over here, larger grains over here. Um, so, you know, you're trying to identify olivine. The first thing you look at is the color, right? We expect that iron um, to give us that green color, more iron, more green. Um, and we could see like the color variations in these different crystals here. I think this one for the most part is mainly olivine. We've probably got maybe some pyroxenes in here, but mainly olivine, especially these larger crystals. Um, so color, that's my first sign. The th second thing that I look for is that um, conchoidal fracture. I shouldn't be seeing any cleavage in an olivine. Um, let's take a look at this one here. The problem with these, because they are so fine grain, it can be difficult to find. Oh, there's a good one right here on the corner is what I'm looking at. I can kind of see a little bit of that conchoidal fracture. Really hard, like I said, with these um, like polycrystalline aggregates where they're quite small. But in general, right, it should look really, really glassy. Um, all of these have a beautiful vitreous luster. Um, can vary in color, but we do expect the green. Some of them, I have this one here that has a really nice euhedral shape. Remember, olivine is orthorhombic, so we're not going to be seeing any of those, you know, garnet-like isometric ball forms or anything like that. We just have low symmetry euhedral crystals, if we can find them. Oh, see, there's a good one with the conchoidal fracture. Very glassy, like I usually say, looks like the glass at the bottom of a um, an aquarium tank or something like that. Um, and in general, they're quite transparent too. Like you can see my finger through it. They're usually pretty good crystals, just usually small. Um, and rarely in these nice forms, just because of how they tend to grow. Um, let me see here. What else do we have for olivine? Hardness. So it's one of those harder minerals, 6.5 to 7. Um, in retrospect, maybe that's not that hard, but we've seen some soft ones earlier. Let's take a look, see if this scratches our glass. A lot of these can be brittle, especially when they come from the San Carlos. So we'll be gentle, see if we can get a good scratch. All right. So I also looks like I powdered a little bit of the mineral too. Um, when minerals are brittle but hard, they will scratch the glass, but also um, have small flakes that come off as well. But what's important is that it scratched the glass right here. Um, so pretty hard, like I said, 6.5 to a seven. Um, it's, you know, I think density can be really difficult to tell for this one because, you know, if I hold a crystal this big in my hand, it's difficult to tell its density as compared to something else. Um, but in general, when I hold one of these xenoliths, um, it's certainly not light, but it's not a very dense, I would say moderate to low moderate density. Um, so not very dense at all. Honestly, the dead giveaways for olivine, the fact that we don't have a lot of really nice samples of them, the green color, the variability of the green, um, that conchoidal fracture, it's pretty gosh darn hard. Um, all of those things are, you know, make olivine pretty obvious to the eye when you see it. Um, I'm trying to think of other minerals that would be difficult to, you know, we've got something like, let's grab you know, a diopside crystal here. I mean, we've got beautiful crystal faces here and it almost has this like gemmy clarity to it as compared to this olivine. They look, you know, I guess the color could be pretty similar, but um, we can see differences just in the fact that this has, you know, a much deeper, richer color. This is just kind of pale. Um, I think those are the only ones that you might get confused at. We don't have any beautiful green garnets, so um, there's that. Or if we put in an example of something like epidote, 
So here's that epidote that we looked at in another video. We've got those striations on the sides, not something that we really see in the olivine. Um, this pistachio green color, let's compare the two. Their colors are quite different, right? This one I can also, it's quite transparent. This one, not so much. So I think those three, you know, epidote, olivine, and diopside would be the ones that I could see you getting confused with, but color really does help. Um, crystal form does help, because remember this olivine is quite a nice sample compared to something like this. I can't see a stinking single nice crystal face on there. So anyways, that's olivine. I think you guys got this one.